John chapter 3. Uh, seems like I preached on John chapter 3 the last time I was here a couple of weeks ago. Is that right? John chapter 3 and verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Lord, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, Lord, that you would enlighten us some more by your word tonight, God. Touch us by your word. Your word is true. And your word is anointed. We pray for your will to be done. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to... Uh, preach to you tonight. From this thought. Transition. Transition. I wonder where the questions began. Was it uh, when he first heard of a man named Jesus? When uh, he heard of miracles being performed? Was it at that time that Nicodemus uh, began to wonder about this man named Jesus Christ. You know, there was something indeed remarkable about this Jesus. There was no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But just taking what he had heard and to come out and say something to the effect that this man could be the Messiah uh, would be very controversial in the least. Uh, and it could be even more damaging than that to someone like Nicodemus. It could be the end of a highly regarded position with the Pharisees. Uh huh. That's it. On the other hand, it was something that Nicodemus just could not ignore. There was just too much talk going around. And, of course, everyone of any age whatsoever at that time knew the scriptural writings and the teachings of the old prophets that told of a coming Messiah. Could this be him? That was the question. And that was the dilemma that Nicodemus found himself in. It seemed that every time the religious leaders got together, regardless of their business that they talked about or whatever, um, talk always came around eventually to this man named Jesus Christ. Well, how do you explain away miracles? I mean, that's what brought about a lot of the conversation. Uh, almost all of the Pharisees to a man had to admit that this 
this Jesus was at least a teacher come from God because that's what he said. He said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. But that's about as far as any of them wanted to go. That's it. Uh, there was too much at stake to just to just come out and admit that this man could possibly be the Messiah. Uh, there was too much at stake for them for that. He was already affecting their position, you might say, and their following to a certain extent. Because people were becoming followers of this man named Jesus. And, and I'm talking about people that had long held the Pharisees in high esteem. Because they were the religious upper crust. Uh -huh. And uh, they loved being met in the marketplace. Wearing their flowing robes and people paying obeisance, you might say, to them. And so there was that to think about. And then there was something else for Nicodemus. There was a nagging in his mind that just would not go away. Even though the others maybe didn't seem as affected by everything that they had heard as Nicodemus was, it bothered him in his private moments. He really had a desire to go see this Jesus for himself. But what would the cost be? I mean, if he were even seen in a crowd where Jesus was, that would not bode well for who he was. He could be severely ridiculed in the least if he was just seen there. And he didn't want to face that. He didn't want uh, he didn't want his cohorts to know his secret desires to, to meet this man named Jesus. And so after wrestling with the thoughts for no telling how long, he made his decision. He said, I'm going to try to see him at night. when no one else is there. And I don't know, folks, how he pulled it off. I mean, seriously. How did he manage it? I don't know. But some way or another, he managed to see Jesus at night when nobody was there to recognize him. <coughs> And after he had made his plan and knew that it would work, he approached Jesus and he made it a point to be very respectful in his approach. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That caught Nicodemus by surprise. That was not what he expected. It also put him in a worrisome position 
because he was thinking, I'm an older man. And he's right. How can I be born again? And the, the, the statement that Jesus made was troubling to Nicodemus. And he came back with the thought, the statement, the question, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And then Jesus added a little bit more to it. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He's got Nicodemus' full attention. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. And this conversation that was taking place was shaking Nicodemus to his core. It was not what he expected at all. Uh, he was getting more than what he came for which is what happens often in an apostolic service. Amen. A lot of times people get more than what they come for. Amen. Amen. Nicodemus just came for a casual conversation. Maybe to put some of his questions at ease. But he ended up getting his boat loaded. <laughs> Amen. 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 And it was a life-changing thing. Of course, you know how long the conversation was because when I was here a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this. And I talked about that even on down to John 3.16 and past John 3.16, it is one of the longest recorded conversations of Jesus having with a one-on-one -on -one person. And it was a life-altering event. Because when you are in the presence of one such as Jesus, like Nicodemus was, when the conversation is directed directly to you as it was Nicodemus. You don't walk away from something like that and just forget it. You don't walk away from something like that and just brush it under the rug. Amen. I seriously doubt Nicodemus got any rest the remainder part of the night. I submit to you that probably when Nicodemus went home, he lay on his bed with his eyes wide open, playing the conversation over and over again in his mind because he had looked forward for quite a while to, to meet this man named Jesus, and he pulled it off. He had that conversation with him, and now he cannot get it out of his mind. And actually, he's got more questions than he's got answers now. Not questions about necessarily what Jesus said, but probably questions about what am I going to do about it. There you go. Amen. Amen.
Nicodemus. is a character that we preach about a lot. But when he walked away from that conversation that night with Jesus, he had something gripping his heart. And I'm going to say that that conversation stayed in his mind day after day, not just that night. But day after day after day, it was something that he just could not dismiss. Such words. And not only that, the feeling that came with those words. And Nicodemus had decisions to make because of a conversation that he would never forget. You see, Nicodemus is mentioned three times in the Word of God. John chapter 3 is the first time that we read about Nicodemus. The second time that we read about Nicodemus is a few chapters later in John. In John chapter 7. And once again, it is nestled in verses that we talk about a lot. Just like we do John chapter 3. But in John chapter 7, it basically starts, or I'm going to start with verse number 37, where it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The next verse, 39, it explains what Jesus was talking about. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, normally that's where we stop reading. Verses 37, 38, and 39, they're Pentecostal candles, uh, candy sticks. Amen? We use those verses a lot because we know that those verses are telling us about the Holy Ghost is that river of living water. Amen. And it's also telling us that if somebody really and truly believes on him, that that's what's going to happen to them. That it's going to be rivers of living water flowing from their innermost being, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. But you see, if you just keep reading for a few verses, <coughs> many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. He was really on their minds, wasn't he? <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, all the talk was about Jesus Christ and what he was saying. Verse 44, and some of them would have 